All right, we're going to come to the tops of our mats. Coming into Samas Titihi. I've been playing with a wider foot, Samas Titihi, to see if that helps with my hips. Y'all just do what feels good to you, trying to keep your hips pointing forward. I found that as I've continued to practice yoga, I'm getting looser and looser in the hips. So my knees are just going out this way, like, ugh. That's kind of bad for your hips. So I'm trying to work on going straight forward in case you wonder what I'm doing. All right. So <laughs> coming to the tops of the mat, toes together, heels apart, belly in, hands to your side, shoulders. Go ahead and roll them out. Get your wiggle jiggles out. Down and away from the ears. Try to keep the ribs knitted in. And we're going to do some sun salutations. So inhale, hands come up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, take your vinyasa. Dasha Dirga Rechika Purika. That technically means 10 deep in exhales, then inhales. We only do five. sun salutations while I move my phone. My inhaling hands up. Exhale forward fold. Inhale half lift. Exhale take your vinyasa. Five breaths here. Do we lose Jennifer? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you guys there? Are you guys there? We're here. Yes. You're back. Yay. Okay. All right. Let's try it again. Another sun A. Sorry about tech issues. Inhale, hands up. Is that the chicken? Excellent. Or something. It was, it was the chickens forward fold. When all this film fades, gloom the chickens. Inhaling halfway lift. <laughs> Exhale. Take your vinyasa. Look at that. I don't practice. I'm, just, I'm glad that Judson heard us because otherwise he'd have come out here in a skibbies. <laughs> oh, yeah. <don't> pay. <laughs> like, hanging out here in your downward facing dog for another three breaths. Two breaths. Last one. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale, walk, step, or jump forward. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, let's come all the way up, reaching up. Samastitihi. All right, we're gonna do another one. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, take your vinyasa. Now you see my studio setup. Breathing deep here. Try to remember your ujjayi breathing. In through the nose, out through the nose. Light rounding in the upper back. That's going to help you to get your core engaged. For some reason, the Wi-Fi wouldn't work and 4G wasn't working. All right, inhale, look between the hands. Now, for those of you that have been coming for a while and you want to work on your jump forward, really round through the spine, squeeze those elbows close to each other, closer to each other, like shoulders width distance apart. Bend the knees and then come forward. You're squeezing it all in to help you float forward. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, let's come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your side, mountain pose. Inhale, let's come into uh, Surya Namaskar B. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, it's that same kind of cat back if you want to jump back with control through your vinyasa. Plant that left heel down, bring that right foot forward, coming into your warrior one. Plant your hands, chaturanga. Right heel plants, left foot forward, warrior one. And chaturanga. Dasha Dirga Rechika Purika. Ten long, slow, deep inhales and exhales. One more. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale, if you want, remembering that cat back to help you jump forward. Half lift inhale and fold. Inhale, back to your chair pose. Exhale, samasitihi. Let's do it again. Inhale, utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, vinyasa. Left heel plants, right foot comes forward, warrior one. Open up, I mean, never mind, take your vinyasa. Can you tell I've been doing some vinyasa classes <laughs> instead of ashtanga classes? I was just gonna keep on flowing. Right heel plants, left foot forward, Warrior one. And vinyasa. Keep breathing, inhaling through the nose. And remember that little bit of rounding here. It's also gonna help you to get the shoulders to go away from the ears a little bit, which will help you to get more weight distributed into your hands, hopefully. More importantly, we really want to activate these back muscles. The back muscles are actually really big. We just don't use them well. One more breath. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale, walk, step, jump forward. Half lift, inhale, and fold. Inhaling back to your, tr uh, whatever this pose is, chair pose. And Sama CTE. I am all discombobulated today, guys. Let's do one more. Inhaling, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, Vinyasa. I was doing some 
AP research, anatomy, physiology. You probably know this, Amelia. Left heel plants, bring that right foot forward. Inhaling into your warrior one. Your, tra your trapezius muscles, it's like a big triangle in your upper back. Go ahead, take your vinyasa. Those are the second largest muscles in your body, next to the glutes, usually, your bottom. Right heel plants, left foot forward. Take your vinyasa. I mean, warrior one. Look at that again. <laughs> Take your vinyasa. The problem is the upper traps usually take over and the lower traps don't do their job. And that's why we have all this shoulder crap. Catch your breath. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale, let's come on forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, back to chair. Exhale, samasthiti. Inhaling, hands to your hips. Jump your feet about hips width distance apart. Head up. And then for your exhale, you're going to forward fold. Grab hold of your big toes with your peace fingers. And then inhale, head comes up to kind of situate yourself. Exhale, pull yourself down. Touch your chin just a little bit. See if that helps you to get down a little lower. Don't lock your knees. Inhale, head up. Exhale, you're going to slide your hands under your feet. Padahastasana. Feet still are about sh shoulders and hips width distance apart. Pull yourself down. Oh. See if you get a little bit of a chiropractic adjustment. Your elbows still stay out wide here. And try inwardly spiraling those thighs towards each other. One more. Inhaling, bring those hands up from underneath the feet. Soften the knees on the exhale, hands to the waist. Inhale, roll yourself up. Be compassionate to your spine. Exhale, samasthiti. Next inhale, we're going to take our right foot to the back of the mat, coming into trikonasana triangle pose. Hips go back, hands go forward, come to this triangle pose. Eventually, left shoulder stacked on top of right shoulder, left hip is stacked on top of right hip. Hashtag goals. Don't let your belly flop. And try to make a triangle here with this lower part of your back, your lower part of your rib cage. So if you're rounding a whole bunch, maybe try coming up to get that triangle action happen. Now inhale, come up. Right toes turn towards the left. Left toes turn towards the left. Hips come back. Reach the hands forward. And then come to your triangle pose. Triangles, making three triangles. One here between your legs. One here for that right arm, this right part of your torso, and then the sky is the other part, and then your arm and leg. Soften that left knee, pull yourself up. Let's go ahead and turn towards the back of the mat. Square your hips off, tilt the tailbone down to prepare. Come to your revolved triangle. Left hand comes to the mat on the inside or the outside of that right foot. And then right hand reaches up towards the sky. Gaze is towards the right fingertips. Go ahead and see what it feels like to rotate the shoulders down and away from the ears and try to get your right shoulder to stack on top of the left. Let's do this for another breath. Inhale, come on up. And then let's do that on the other side. Just windowing everything up, over, square it off first, and then down. Notice the difference between sides. Soften in that left knee, pull yourself up, and then big step to the front, so the CTE. Let's do extended side angle now. Big step to the back of the mat. Turn the toes, right toes towards the right. 
really deep, bendly into, bendly, deeply bend into that right knee. Right hand comes down to the mat on the inside of the outside of that right foot and left hand reaches forward. Holding this here for another three breaths. Gaze is at your left fingertips if that's okay with your neck or it's looking down. Push down into that right knee, lift yourself up. Let's do that on the other side. So deeply bend instead of bendly deep, that left knee and come to your extended side angle. Pushing down to lift up. Let's go ahead and twist this out. So turn towards the back of the mat. Missy, typically you come to Samastitihi between each uh, of these exercises. You can come down to your left knee if you'd like. Left elbow to the outside of that right knee. In a lead class at least, Missy. And then you can stay here with this revolved crescent lunge or you can bring your left hand down to the mat on the outside of that right foot. Left heel plants, right hand reaches forward. Deeply bend that right knee and get a super awesome ringing out of the spine for another breath. All right, let's come up and do that on the other side. You can always come down to your knee first to help get that twist a little deeper or just come up to the toes of the right foot and then do this uh, twisted crescent lunge first. Ooh. And then you can open your arms like a book or extended side angle arms, warrior two-ish feet. When you're ready, come on up and mountain pose. Beautiful job. We're gonna come into separate leg stretching. Medium size step to the back of the mat, arms up wide to a T, inhale here. Exhale, forward fold, hands plant down on the mat in between the feet, and then head comes down. If you've got short legs like me, everything is touching. Although Manju says you don't put tons of weight in the top of your head. If you have long legs, that might be more difficult. Inhaling, half lift, suck the belly in, soften the knees for the exhale. Then the next inhale rolls you up, hands at your waist. Squeeze the elbows together for this inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Keep those elbows squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Your toes are either straight forward or slightly pigeon-toed. Soften the knees, roll yourself up. Hands out wide to a T, inhale. Exhale, take them down and behind you, pull them down and away, and then forward fold. <clears throat> this is Prasarita Pada Tanasana C. If you tuck your chin and round a little bit forward, chest, chin to chest, that's gonna help your arms to go down a little more. Oh, it feels amazing. Soften the knees, pull yourself up. Use your glutes, not your back. Take those arms out wide to a T. And then forward fold, grab and hold of the big toes with your peace fingers. Head up for this inhale, exhale, forward fold. Soften the knees. Inhale, pushing yourself up halfway. Exhale, preparing maybe hands to the waist, then inhale, come up. Big step to the top of the mat, Samasitihi, mountain pose. Now we're coming into pyramid pose. Take your hands out behind you, reverse prayer, fingertips down or up, and then medium size step to the back of the mat. Square those hips off, soften the right knee, and then on the exhale, you're gonna forward fold. Yeah. 
Soften that right knee as you pull yourself up. Turn towards the left. Turn towards the front. Pyramid pose, other side. Try not to lock out that left knee, especially as you get more mobility in those hamstrings, I mean, flexibility in the hamstrings. Pull those elbows closer together behind you. Feel that terrific stretch across the shoulders and the wrist. One more breath here. Inhale, pulls yourself up. Oh, hallelujah. Coming forward, Samasthiti, shake it out. Now we're coming to everybody's favorite part of the standing series, balances. So let's go ahead, ground down a whole bunch through that left foot. We can either, with your left hand at your waist to help remember to squeeze, 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 squeeze. Grab your right knee or your right big toe. Holding either one that you have. If you have your right big toe, you try to forward fold, maybe gaze down for another three, two, one. Inhaling, head's going to come up. Exhale, take it out to the side, heel in, toe out. A little more compassionate to that heel, that hip rather, keeping that chest nice and tall. Maybe gaze towards the left. Bring that right foot forward. Maybe you forward fold. Head up for the inhale and then let it go. Hold it here for five, four. Lean into this, three, two, one. Hallelujah, set it down. <clears throat> Shake it out. I've been doing a lot of hip work to try to fix this hip issue I have, and man alive, they're feeling it, I don't know about you. Ground down through that right foot. Let's pick the left knee up. Now, for those of you going for the toe, you're gonna see this all the time. Try to use more control, don't grab from the inside. Grab from the outside if you're doing it with a bent knee. Uses more core work. Forward fold if you got the toe. Head up, and then open up to the side, heel in, toe out, chest proud, shoulders pulling down and away from the ears, looking off in the opposite direction, coming back forward, and forward fold. Beautiful job, inhale, head up. Let's hold it here for five, four, three, two, one, set it down, shake it out. Now we're coming into Ardha Baddha Padma, Padmasana. We're gonna ground down through that left foot. Step one, figure four, and just maybe lean into it to get into that piriformis. If you have the half lotus, go for your half lotus here, bringing the heel up towards your belly button, wrapping that right arm around and behind, if it can't grab the right toe, it can grab maybe the left elbow and forward fold. Eventually toe on the left hand or in line with toes of the left foot and your hips are square and your chest is square, everything is in line. Maybe depending on your anatomy. Soften that left knee if you forward fold it, coming up with control and then release. The exit's just as important as the entrance. Okay, let's ground down through that right foot. Remember you can figure four here, that's awesome for the piriformis. Bending into this will really get into that left butt cheek. If you want to, you journey a little bit further, coming into your half lotus. Ooh, that hip was not doing it today. Grabbing the left foot with the left hand or the right elbow and forward fold. Ooh, Nelly, what is going on here? The beautiful thing about an, a regular Ashtanga practice is you start to feel subtle shifts in your body. You can feel when something doesn't feel the same. And then you can use your knowledge of the asanas to help bring about the balance. Soften that right knee, push yourself down to lift up with control and then set it down. All right, let's take a vinyasa to Utkatasana. 
Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, take your vinyasa. Inhale and coming up, half for this upper dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Look between your hands, I'll meet you in chair pose. Two more breaths. Neutral spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, vinyasa. Left heel plants, right foot comes forward, warrior one. Take this five breaths to really get into your alignment here for this warrior one. Left hip forward, left shoulder forward, hands reaching up overhead. Maybe they touch. Gaze is towards the fingertips, but you don't crick your neck to do it. If you have to, you just look up towards your eyebrows for another breath. Straighten that right knee. Turn it towards the left. Hey, Amy, turn it towards the left again and come into your warrior one on the left. Just join us where we are, Amy. I'm so confused, okay. You could do some sun salutations, open up, warrior two. Sink in here. Straighten that left leg, turn the left toes towards the, I guess now right side, right toes facing the front of the mat. Warrior two at the front on the right, shoulders down and away from the ears for another three, two, one, and vinyasa. Inhaling, look between those hands. Exhale, we're gonna walk, step, or jump ourselves through to a seated position. All right, from here, we're gonna do Dandasana pose. Legs out, stretched, feet, on e feet out, feet flexed, hands on either side of the hips. Suck the belly in, shoulders down and away from the ears for another three breaths. Really squeeze that pelvic floor. When you're ready, releasing this and forward fold, Pashimottanasana. The first one, you grab your toes. If that's pretty easy, you grab the outsides of the feet and try to flatten those feet. Inhale, head comes up. Exhale, if you grabbed your toes, grab the outsides of the feet. If you grab the outsides of the feet, grab, reach around and see what happens as you try to bind here. Just see what happens. Inhaling, coming up. And now we're going to take our vinyasa. Look between those hands, walk, step, jump yourself through to a seated position. Now we're coming into reverse tabletop. So option number one, you do this with bent knees, fingertips facing the hips. Rotate those shoulders forward and lift your hips to where they're in line with the shoulders. Full expression, toes are together, legs are straight, heels are apart. You lift yourself up. We're holding this for five, four, three, two, one. Set it down and 
forward fold or take your vinyasa. I just really wanted a forward fold at that moment. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale, let's walk, step, or jump through to a seated position. Now we are going to come into Ardha Baddha Padma Pashimottanasana. So left leg extends out long, right leg comes in. Love on this little hip, baby. Now, if you've got the half lotus, go for the half lotus on your right. Right heel towards your belly button. Bring the right knee forward. Internally rotate the right shoulder. Reach it around and behind to grab the right toe. Yeah, ladies. And then you forward fold. If you don't have the full bind, that's okay. Left hand can hold that right foot, and your right hand can hold that left elbow. Perfect, Amelia. Perfect. Good, Amy. I think I see you too. Missy, perfect, Elizabeth. One more breath here. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, let's go straight to the other side. So take that little left leg. Love the little hip, baby. Especially if you have some tight hips. When you are ready, you just go straight for either that figure four or the half lotus. Now that I know that you guys can all do it reach in that left heel towards your belly button. So that way you know your left toes are gonna to be basically on your waist. Left hand reaches around to maybe grab the left toes. If that's not gonna happen, right hand holds the left toes and the left hand grabs the right elbow. And then you forward fold. Amy, tr Amy try to grab the outside of your right foot instead of just the toes. I, don't, I can't tell if that's what you're doing because you're trying to flatten your foot and then nose towards your shin. Inhaling, coming up. Exhale, let's take your vinyasa. Inhale, look between those hands. Wait, we're doing second series today. Exhale, we're going to jump to the top of the mat. Okay, from here, I'm going to face you guys so you can see me. Roll up the tops of your mats and make like a little tube with the tops of your mat. Like three or four times, depending on how tight your Achilles are. Now we're going to put our heels on the mat that's all, round, that's all rolled up. We're going to come into this tiny, tiny, tiny little ball squat. This is the first posture of the second series called Pashasana. This is the only time that we start off to the left. Take your right elbow to the outside of the left foot and then bring your left foot, left knee, and then bring your hands to your heart center. Eventually, and Amy, Amelia, Missy, you guys all have long, long arms and legs. Eventually, you'll be able to get this bind where you wrap your arms around both legs. Until then, if you want to, take your arms wide and just wrap around the right leg. Good, Amy. That was a good twist. Nice, Amelia. One more breath here. All right, let's come up. Shake it out. And let's go straight to the other side. So again, you start out toes together, heels apart a little bit. I usually, if I'm in my practice doing this, I kind of have to hang out here and like negotiate with my back to, light, to lighten up. Once you've got that super deep twist, you, you can also, you can bind around that left knee. You can try binding around the right knee. Or you can try to bind around both knees. And after your fifth breath, you release this. Whew. And I love it. Take your vinyasa. That's a mega awesome twist.
I think you guys can still see me. Yes. All right. Look in between those hands. Walk, step, or jump through to a seated position. And join me in a half hero pose on the right. So the right knee is bent, right heel beside your left butt cheek. Now, if this makes your right knee sing, then you stay right here. First, primary series version of this, you forward fold over that extended left leg. But if you want to try the second series version of it, bend that left knee like you were doing that hip baby. Bring your left hand to your bound fist, bound hands, and then work towards straightening that left leg. This is so much harder for you ladies with long legs. Nice. And if you can't bind the legs, let go, bind your hands, let go and just hold your calf. Beautiful, Amelia. Nice. Holding it here, forehead toward the shin. And then releasing this, pardon? Other side. Woo. Rub that knee if you need it. My knees do not like that half year, I suppose. All right. Now you're going to have your half hero on the left. If you want, you can forward fold over that extended right leg. That's totally cool. The second series version of this, you do your little hip baby thing, sort of. And then you reach your right leg up into the air. If you can't bind around the feet, that's okay. Grab your calf. Grab wherever you need to, cat to grab to get that good stretch along the hammy and the calf. We'll be here another three, two, one. Relaxing that down and take your vinyasa. We're going to inhale here, exhale, come out to plank. Slow count of five, come down to your belly for five, four, three, two, one, all the way down. Now we're coming into Ashtanga frog. Ashtanga frog is way different than yin frog. So for the first time, we're going to bring that left hand, left arm in front to brace you. Bring that right foot up and try to grab hold of that right foot with your right hand. And then once you have that right foot with your right hand, pull your right heel towards your butt cheek. Yes. So now eventually you rotate your shoulder forward, elbow up, up, fingertips down. I guess the tops part, the tops part of your fingers. You guys feeling that stretch in your quad? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right, release this. Let's do that on the other side. Elizabeth's just going to be here forever. All right, bend that left knee. And then it, the, we're going to internally rotate that left shoulder as we push that left heel, whoa, gnarly, towards the butt cheek. Nice. Working your chest to be squared off to the front. Because you're going to want to be facing the left. Try to square yourself off towards the front. Bring that left shoulder forward. Good job. All right. Y'all want to try both feet? Releasing this. Shake it out. Let's just see what happens when we try both feet. So you'll bend both knees. Reach around and behind. Try to grab your feet. And pull the heels down. Elbows up. Perfect, Amelia. Good one. Nice, Amy. Lift the chest if you can for three, two, one. Holy moly, release this. Say a prayer that we're done. Push yourself up for a high plank. And then downward facing dog. Wiggle it out. Do what you need to do to make your back forgive you. Inhaling back to high plank. Exhale, slow count of five down to the mat. Five. Four, keep the integrity. Three, two, spine straight. One, all the way down. Now we're coming into locust pose. Locust pose, this first one, your hands are down by your side, palms down. Pretend you're the little mermaid, so heels together. 
pubic bone pressing into the mat as you lift the feet, lift the chest, holding it here. A beautiful isometric exercise for your entire posterior chain. Squeeze the shoulder blades together a little bit more. Lift the legs a little bit more. One more breath. Nice. Now bend the elbows, bring the hands in line with the chest. Elbows squeeze in. Five more breaths. This time, really squeeze those elbows together and down away from the shoulders for another three, two, one. Set it down. Holy moly. Windshield wiper those legs. So second series, the first half of the second series was my homework when I first got into Ashtanga because it's such a back strengthening series of poses. And that right there is one of them. All right, let's take your vinyasa. So for this one, you push down and lift up, downward facing dog. Now we're gonna go back to this high plank. Slow count of five, down to the mat. Five, four, three, two, one, good job. Now we're gonna do floor bow, Dhanurasana. Reach back and grab one or both of your feet. Bring the knees closer together. Go ahead and squeeze those shoulder blades together and kick into those hands. Holding it here for another five, Four, lift the feet more. Three, see if you can. Two, one, set it down. Hallelujah. Once you lie for those legs. We're going to take a vinyasa between those, Elizabeth, because technically there is. All right, plug those toes into the mat. Squeeze those elbows into the, the body as you push down, lift up. Downward facing dog. We usually skip the vinyasa. But Amy didn't get a chance to warm up as much as us, so we're warming up through vinyasas. Inhale, high plank. Slow count of five, down to the mat. Five, four, three, two, one. If you do a traditional leg sequence, you'd have to take a vinyasa between the Dhanurasana and then the side ones. So come back to your floor bow. And this is where you kind of feel like a little kid at the playground. We're going to roll over towards the right. Bring your four, the right ear, the right side of your head down to the mat. Stretch your left shoulder away from your left ear as you kick into those hands. For another three, two, one. Roll back over to your belly. Kick into your hands for one. And then roll over to the other side. This time, really stretch the right shoulder away from the right ear. All right, let's roll back over to our bellies. Five breaths here in this bow pose for five, maybe just five counts. It's technically five breaths. Kick, kick, kick. And then release. Hallelujah. Once you're up in those legs. That right there is a hell of a good back warm up. And your puppy says she needs to help you. Push down and lift up. High plank. Downward facing dog. Now we're going to come into our camel pose. So come down to your knees. Make sure your knees are about hips width distance apart so you can like hang loose or two fists in between each uh, knee. Step one, your toes are planted into the mat. I wanna make sure you can see me. Hands in your yogi pockets. Go ahead, check your bottom. Make sure it's nice and loosey goosey. Rotate those shoulders forward. And on the inhale, you push your hips forward, rotate the shoulders forward, keep your bottom nice and wiggle jiggle, reach back for your heel. On the exhale. Bringing those hands back to the hips to lift up. And let's whew, take your vinyasa. 
Remember to go nice and slow to keep building that heat and strength in the upper body. Now, if you did your camel pose up on your toes and it was hella hard, do another camel pose just like that. If you did your camel pose and your feet, you were up on your toes and you thought you could give it some more, flatten your feet to the mat and do another camel pose with your feet flat on the mat. If you want to journey a little further, you go to Lagu Varasana. And the way that you do Lagu Varasana, if you know it, do it. I'll just leave it at that. And then for you, the Amelia and Amy, for you guys, since you guys are still kind of new to Ashtanga, let's just do another camel together. We're going to end up doing two more camels. So if you're up on your toes, try to be on the tops of your feet. Missy, do you need Lagu Varasana? Yeah, give me a... So your knees can be a little bit wider than hips width distance apart. You can make sure your bottom stays as loose as you can, as long as you can. Slide your hands back down your thighs where they ultimately will catch the back part of your knees. Top okay. of your head reaches for the mat. Thank you. Inhaling. Everybody coming out of this, take your vinyasa. Ooh, I'm gonna do some cat cows before I do a vinyasa. All right, last camel pose if you're doing it, or you can try that Lagu Varasana, or you can try the pinnacle back bend of the second series, which is Kapitasana. I honestly have no idea if I can do it right now because I'm nursing a shoulder injury. But you set up just like we just did in camel pose. But your hands come up. So you've got either another camel pose, you can do a lagu varasana, or you can just see what happens if you basically come to a back bend, but you're on your knees. So hands come up. Shoulders down and away from the ears, lifting your shoulders up, lifting your chest up, then you bend backward. And that might be right where you stay. Eventually, you drop your head to the mat, slide your hands forward, and grab your, you'll be grabbing your heels eventually. I'm just grabbing my toes today. When you've done five breaths, in this last back bend, come out of it, say a little prayer that we're done, yeah. and then take your vinyasa. Prayer is appropriate. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's like a massive amount of heart opening. Super massive amazingness. Okay, so technically there's another pose. It's called Supta Varasana, but we don't do that because you basically need a partner. So we're going to skip that and go into our twists. So first thing we're going to do is right foot back like hero's pose. The second series twists are actually easier than the first, the primary series. Now we're going to go for a half lotus pose on the left. Now we're going to try to reach that left arm around and behind and grab the left foot. That's not happening today. You can bring your left hand to the mat behind you, right hand to your left knee, and twist it out. If you've got the left toe with your left hand, take your right hand up and then slide it under the left knee. Gaze over the left shoulder. Belly stays in. Inhale, come on out of this, and then let's do this on the other side. So the intermediate series, the second series is called, is another, it's also called Nadi Shodana. Left side, left foot back like half hero's pose. The first series is designed to burn up all the impurities of your physical body. Half lotus on this right leg. The second series is supposed to work on your nervous system. So if this elicits a lot of emotions, if it makes you kind of feel dizzy or high, 
that's normal. Reach that right arm around and behind you for the right foot. If it doesn't touch, it can grab the ground behind you, left hand to that right knee, twisting and looking over that right shoulder. If you want the full expression, left hand goes up and underneath that right knee. And it's a super fantabulous stretch and twist. All right, release this and let's take our vinyasas. So the second twist of the second series is the option if you can't get Marichyasana D. So what we're gonna do is take that right heel, bend the right knee and bring the right heel to the outside of your left butt cheek. I don't know if you can see it. Take that left foot and cross it over the right knee. So it's kind of like we're sitting here at attention. And if this is a good twist, then you stay right here. If you want more, take that left hand around and behind, and maybe it kickstands behind you. Right elbow to the outside of that left thigh, thumb towards your chest. That's option number two. The full expression here is that left hand, left shoulder internally rotates, left hand reaches for your right inner thigh, and your left hand is reaching for your left foot, the arch side of your left foot. Did that make sense? Good job, ladies. All right, release this. Other side, left heel to the outside of your right butt cheek. Right foot crosses over that left leg. Option number one, kick stand that right hand behind you, left elbow to the outside of that right knee. Chest is proud, gaze over the right shoulder. If you want to journey further, you take that right hand, internally rotate the right shoulder, reach the right arm around and behind for your left inner thigh. Left foot grabs the left big toe on the arch side. It's not really grabbing the big toe, but he's like stepping on it underneath the big toe. Releasing this and take your vinyasa. From here, we get to practice our crow pose. So we actually get two opportunities to practice crow. Your first one, you actually come to the tops of the mat and set up like we do in a typical flow class. So hands plant down on the mat, shoulders width distance apart, elbows bend a whole bunch. You plant the knees high up onto the triceps. You look forward, you lean forward, come up to the tippy toes and see what happens here. And you hold this crow for five breaths. And then you jump back, jump back and take your vinyasa. Nice. All right. So the second crow is a booger. It's just a booger. Technically, you jump from downward facing dog into crow. And you might be thinking WTH. So for me, it was a mental block. And I don't always land it, and I haven't been practicing this much lately, I'll be honest. But what I had to do was think, catch my knees or catch my elbows. So this is the crow where you land and your knees typically are on the outsides of the elbows, especially when you start out. So if you want to try it, you'll bend your knees a whole bunch. I don't know if I can talk and do this. Inhale and catch yourself. Not very well. Let's try it again. And you just keep practicing. Let's do this again. There we go. Or you just practice your crow. <laughs> I was so scared because I, I face planted on this multiple times. 
There was like this <laughs> mental block of there's no way these guys can hold up these guys because I got six guys. <laughs> and um, I was practicing with a dude from Minnesota. His name is Jamie. And he's just like, think, catch your elbows. Think, catch your elbows. And for some reason, that was all I needed. I was like, oh, I'm just going to catch my elbows. So anyways, you technically jump into crow, hold it for five and jump back. But we're done with that. Okay, so now technically it's legs behind the head. Maybe. Send that left leg out in front of you. I'm not going to do legs behind my head because my hip is bothering me. Elizabeth can work on it. I'm going to love my little hip baby. And then what you do to get to this legs behind the head action, you straighten that right leg. Take that left arm up and grab from the top part of your foot side, the outside of your foot. Take the right knee behind your right shoulder, plant the right hand on the mat. You can also just make elephant noises here. But eventually you straighten your right leg. And that's how you get to that legs behind the head action. Nice, Amelia. All I see is Abby, Amy. <laughs> All right, when you're done, let's try that on the other side. <laughs> left knee, hold that left hip, baby. And when you're ready, you play with that left knee to the outside of that left shoulder, making the elephant trunk noise, grabbing the foot. Maybe you hang out here. Maybe you try to straighten it. Nice. Maybe you just sit there and think those people be crazy. Totally okay. Because so we are. So right hand hold your left foot? Okay. Yep. Yep. So the right hand is going to come to the top part of your left foot. And then you're going to try to straighten your left leg and your left hand will brace your body on the ground. So my left hand's planted on the mat. So then it becomes kind of like a lever. Good. Good. And then eventually you look up towards the right. Nice. That's perfect. That's how you get the legs behind the head. Oh my. When that be when that becomes relatively comfortable, we will revisit it and hopefully my hip will be better and I'll just be like, all right, next step is. All right, the next step is actually called Dwi Pada Shirshasana, which is both legs behind your head. And both legs behind your head is actually easier to practice than just one. And mostly that's because you're on your back. And nobody's watching you, so it's okay. What you do is you come onto your back like you would be doing a happy baby. But instead of grabbing the outsides of your feet, you're working your elbows and shoulders to the backs of your knees. So it's like happy baby on steroids. And then this is how you work your Dwi Pada Shashasana. As soon as you can get your shoulders to your the backs of your knees, that's when you know you're basically ready for Dwi Pada Shashasana. This is an amazing stretch for the low back. Like a maze balls stretch for the low back. Nice, Missy. Good, Elizabeth. And you just hang out here for like five breaths, 10 breaths. Do you guys feel the stretch in the low back? Yeah. Oh, it's so awesome. That's Missy, you're basically there. That's awesome. Yeah. Word of warning, when you use this with your partner, don't let him be too forceful. <laughs> Maybe that's too shocking. All right, come on out of this. No, that was, that was my thought. I was like, oh man, if he walks by. <laughs> yeah, don't practice this when your partner is home. <laughs> I didn't hear you, Elizabeth. Never worry about paying for yoga again. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He's like, this is what I get. Here, honey, go more. <laughs> All right, let's take our vinyasas. 
So now is where we practice our forearm stand. And Amy, I don't know if you have a wall nearby that you want to practice it with, Amy, Missy, or Amelia. The if you don't want to practice your forearm stand, you can practice your dolphin push-ups. Dolphin push-ups are what got me to the point where I was less afraid of forearm stand. And so what is a dolphin push-up? You set up in your down dog, but you're on your forearms. This is setting you up perfectly for a pinch of my urasana. Dolphin push-ups, you just go forward and back until fatigue. If you can do some dolphin push-ups and it's not that terrible, I suggest holding a dolphin pose with like standing splits legs. That's another isometric drill that will help you to get strong enough to hold you. So, and it looks a little bit like this. Holding that standing split. Because as you hold it, your hips, your hips start to line up over your shoulders and then you float up. And floating up is much more controlled than jumping up. That's your homework, Elizabeth. Now, Amy, try standing splits in that dolphin pose. You too, Amelia. You remember standing splits, right? But with the, uh, on your forearms and just hold that standing split. Feel the shoulders active. Nice. And then switch sides. Do you guys feel your shoulders like on fire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amelia, you do that for a while and then put your feet up on a block holding that static hold. You'll get this because you're strong. You too, Amy. So you guys are kind of at a disadvantage because your legs are really long and mine aren't. <laughs> Which it just means you have to pick up more. It, you're, you're like that fulcrum effect. All right. When you guys are done with this, let's go ahead and take our vinyasa. We're gonna inhale here, look between the hands, and on the exhale, walk, step, or jump your way through to seated. Let's roll ourselves down. Long body stretch, maybe. And then let's do three back bends. Your choice, bridges or wheels. If you've got a really good wheel practice, then let's do one wheel together, and then I'll show you drills to walk down the wall to work on your, walk, your drop backs, okay? So to get your wheel, for those of you that don't know how to do your wheel, touch your heels, bring your fingertips to where they're facing the shoulders, elbows are trying to reach up, tilt the tailbone down to get the whole low back on the mat, and then lift yourself up. Hold this back bend here for five, four, three, two, one. Set it down. Come on out, knees to your chest. Give it a squeeze. Good wheels. Now, to work your drop backs. You guys know what drop backs are? It's basically where you come from standing and you end up in a wheel pose. To work your drop backs, you come next to a wall, or in your case, Amy, well, maybe not at first, because if you miss, that would hurt. I've gone down the deck railings, and that was really good because it was handles, you know? So if you've got a, it, that way it's like a, you know, like you've got your biceps to grip with. To start out, make sure your hips are nice and loosey-goosey. You're going to stand with your back towards the wall about your body's, not quite your body's width, like your torso's width distance. Now you're gonna lift your hands up and overhead because that's way harder and that's what we wanna train on the wall. Lift your hands up and overhead and then Steve Urkel your hips forward. You guys remember him? So super tuck the hips, reaching the hands up. Now reach the hands back for the wall behind you. 
and then land on the wall. And then if that's really intense, you just stay right there and then you come up. Eventually, you walk your hands down the wall, keeping that Steve Urkel super scoop in your hips. And then once you walk down, you walk up. Nice, Amy. Good back bend, Elizabeth. I thought I saw another wheel in there, Amelia. <laughs> All right, let's do one more back bend wherever you are. Man, this bra makes me super boobalicious. We are not publishing this workout. <laughs> Whoa. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> He's just giggling it. I realized there were boobs everywhere. All right, after your final back bend, Mm, that was a really sloppy one. You can either do happy baby, knees to chest. It's technically a vinyasa to a seated forward fold. And then you do your chakrasana. Did we do that last week? I suck at chakrasanas. Hey. It's, what's that? So chakrasanas are basically like, oh yeah, you guys did this last week because this is a volleyball thing. Do your volleyball thing. So it's basically like, and I have to get some momentum usually, a, bit, a little back flip because it's fun. And then you come into your shoulder stand. Oh. What? My dog's just standing there as I land on him and not moving. <laughs> <laughs> My last two dogs when I was learning yoga, they learned very quickly because I landed on them so many times. I felt bad, actually. I felt like I actually really hurt both of them a couple times because I had no idea they'd moved yeah. in. Oh, no. So you do your shoulder stand, then you come into plow pose. Try not to look in either direction while you're in plow. Reaching those hips to be over the shoulders. And then you come into deaf man's pose. After deaf man's pose, you go back to your shoulder stand. Then you try to come into your Padmasana or Lotus pose. If you don't have Lotus pose, you can do easy seated position or crisscross applesauce. And you're trying to hold your knees up. And then after you've done that for about five breaths, you try to bend your at your hips and wrap your arms around your knees in this lotus pose.
we lost Jennifer. <laughs> so you do a vinyasa and then you do your your uh, headstand if you want to after that. All right, am I back? Yes. Yeah. Elizabeth has us working yeah. towards the stand. Yes. <laughs> or child's pose, yogi's choice. That's good too. That's also an inversion. <laughs> nice setup, Amy. Elizabeth could hang out all day in that stand. Yeah. Beautiful. After your headstand and your child's pose, you come into your final resting pose, your Shavasana pose. Amy, we, we switched the schedule around. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, we're starting at six, just to see if that, if that works better. Um, Sorry for interrupting. No, no, no. We, the more the merrier. Yeah, I totally could have made it at six. six. I, I was just killing time, so now I know. Now I know. Get really heavy here on your mat. Surrender to the ground beneath you. Sky above, earth below. Slowly start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Bring in some life back. When you're ready, you'll come over to your most supportive side. And then with heavy eyes, come up to a comfortable seated position. Thank you ladies for joining me today. I hope you had fun. You guys go in peace. Namaste.